So this is the Mark III Ford Focus. It's a 2011 plate. We'll get it in the garage. So we've got the Focus back in again. I sealed up this rear light that was leaking, but I've had a few comments saying that these vents behind the rear bumper are prone to giving problems. So what we're going to do today is take the bumper off. I'm going to check these rear vents, and if they need sealing up, then we'll seal them up. Um, so yeah, here we go. It's, uh, it seems to be a really common problem, so we'll have fun doing it. All right, so first things first, we've got to get the boot on and the rear lights have got to come out so we've got to take both the rear lights out uh, there's some fixings uh, in the back and then we've got two screws underneath the uh, wheel liner as well so there's not a lot holding it on there's some clips body clips around here that have got to be careful to get those out but all in all it shouldn't be too bad let's um yeah let's crack on let's get the lights out and then we'll go from there take the cover off we've got one screw there and one screw at the top so we'll just pop those out this side's coming out not too bad because I recently did that water leak repair on this rear light in the other video. So just pop them out there, finger tight. Just whiz them out. Quite long threads. Just keep your hand on the light. Okay, that's them two out of there. We'll do the same with the other side. Oh, tight these ones. Just get some pliers on it. Right, let's get these lights out. Um, we've undone the two bolts inside, so these just literally unclip. Uh, we don't have to completely disconnect them, we can just pop that out of the thing and then get them round and inside the car. Something along those lines. So let's do the same with this one. They've got a little, there's a little clip at the back. So when we're pulling them out, we've just got to release it and then pop it out that little, that's that little push thing there. Pull too hard on that wire. If it's going to be a problem, we'll just undo it. But that looks okay. It looks like we're, uh, we're pretty good there. Right then. We've got these two clips at the back, two bolts there. They're seven millimeter. So we've got two seven mil bolts. Got big self tapping threads on that side. On that side. This is what's holding the bumper in there. You see, we've got to push down those tabs. And release that but we'll undo the, the two uh, side bolts first so to get these ones in the side there we've just got the uh, screwdriver bit into a little five and a half millimeter socket into the ratchet and then it's going to give us a bit of uh, well make it easy to get down here so what we've got here yes this is just the bolt we've got to remove so we'll get the ratchet in there using this little ratchet with the little socket on there just saves us taking the wheel off it makes a lot of light work of that. And there it is, just like a, another self-tapping bolt. 
but that's released that off there now and then behind this piece of trim here this in so we get a screwdriver just poke it in behind that wheel liner just pull it back and it reveals another another mounting bolt there so again we get the ratchet in And then tucked away, tucked away under here behind the dirt, we've got another screw. Yeah, look at that one, tucked away in the mulch. Yeah, so I do apologise. I did keep saying two mounting uh, screws on this side, where there is actually three. There's the one behind that cover. There's this one and the one at the bottom. But we can get them all with this little ratchet. Go. We'll do the same on the other side. It does amaze me that these bumpers are only held on with so few screws. When you think of how much wind pressure there is whipping under the car, loading up the pressure on that back bumper when you're doing 70 80 mile an hour, and yet it's only held on with just a few clips and a couple of screws. the clips underneath now just pull this center down now these are notoriously full of crud and sometimes struggle to come out without breaking I'm just levering it and working it hopefully it will just Center out, and then the other bit should just pop down now. There we go, that's one out. And we can just slide that back in again, ready to go back. And then we've got the same further over. Try and get it start. Use them as a wedge and just push it through. And try and pull it out. Again, this one's right above the exhaust, so it, it gets hot as well, which isn't going to help things. It makes it go a bit brittle. Okay, that's that one out. That one weren't too bad, was it? So that's all feeling a bit loosey goosey. Right, so what we've got here is we've got a little clip there. We've got to push that one down, and then that's got to go down. That's got to come up. Same on that. So let's just try and release these from here without breaking these. These are all going to be quite brittle. If it's a really cold day, be extra careful. I'm quite fortunate. We're in the garage. We've got the heater on, so things have warmed up a tad, and it just makes everything just that little bit more supple. But the colder that plastic is, the more brittle it gets. Let's come back in again. There's that one. That's that one and that one gone, I think. And then get that one again. Okay. Right, that's starting to come away. And the same down the side here, we pull this. We pull, grab, grab that and pull it sideways. That's released from there. That one's coming out. That's that side loose. So let's go through the other side. Um, screwdriver. Again, we're trying to just release these clips without breaking anything. We'll push that one there. We'll push that little knocking down there. 
that one's away. Get that one under, underneath there as well. Oh, it's a little tricky one. Try and get that in just to help it come away. There we go. It's coming out. Release this out of the clips at the side. Right, okay, here we go. Alright, so the whole lot now should just come away. Because we have got a wire here for uh, the parking sensors, which is coming across to this side. Just got to be careful we don't break that off, we'll just unclip it. Just have to unclip it from that one in a second. Uh, so it's got a little tab on there you've got to release so i've stick a screwdriver in there and push it it just helps it out okay. See. Um, right, we can actually leave that bit still intact we don't need to go any further so these are the dreaded vents and if they if they are bad the water's coming in behind through that gap there like that see the gap and I mean, to be fair, water could get past that seal there. It's not, you know, they are a little bit Mickey Mouse. So we'll whip them out and we'll seal them in while we're here. Uh, but yeah, see this one's, this one on the side is quite loose. So let's whip them out, seal them up and put them back in. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, these are a pig to get out. They really are, because I don't want to break it, so I don't want to just out, you know, get hold of it and absolutely reef it out. Wow, so tight. So there is four tabs on each vent holding it in, and it's where my screwdriver is now, just behind there, there is a tab. But as much as you try and get on it, it, it doesn't seem to want to release it. It's like a fish hook effect. I mean, yeah, that's just started to go now, look. More, more luck than judgment. If I can just get that one, I'd better slip it out somehow. But it, they're really tight, and it, my fingers are hurting trying to get my fingers in behind it. tough they were tough to get out weren't they at least we can now see the other one from behind if we come in here now through the hole we can actually see the other the other vent and you can see where the clips are on it so we can squeeze them and get that out no problem at all they're on either side so this one was top and bottom but look at the uh, how wet that is down there there's a lot of water sat in the bottom and this is the part that smells this wadding just gets stagnant and horrible but in the back there you've got this wadding that we can now pull out but at the bottom of the wadding there's a bung underneath you can see that hole there that's where the that's where the bung would be if you just push that bung out then the water will drop out Okay, okay. So let's go with this one. And like I said, we can see these tabs on the inside now, so we should be able to ease this one out just by pushing those tabs. I'll get the thing around the other side and do the same on that side. Just going back to those bungs, you can just pop those out before you take the bumper off just to see if there's any water in there. That bottom one's a bit tricky to get out. that out as well so you've got just tabs either side there but again you can see there's water behind that so there's definitely water been getting through them so what we'll do is dry these out we'll dry this wadding out as well or just chuck it away because it really does stink just whip that out and we can dry that off right let's move over to the other side see if we can 
get this one out a little bit easier. Yeah. Right, so we know we've got a clip there and a clip there, and two at the top. So let's try and get this bottom one first. Just to prove a point how difficult they are to get out, I'm just going to leave this rolling so you can see how I struggled with it. Even knowing where those little clips are, it was still really difficult to get out. You see, I've got my fingers in there, really pulling on it, trying to find those clips, and it's just really, really difficult. Again, don't want to break that vent. But you can get your screwdriver and bend it and get it right in behind it, and yet you still can't seem to release those clips. I mean, they must be like curling behind that bodywork. Oh dear, that was a crack. It's still not coming out though. <laughs> Come on, give it a good pull. Something's going to happen in a minute. I know how it is. Uh, oh, it's going, look. It's going. Flipping look how tight it is. Maybe, come on. That looks good. Something's happening. But just get behind that bit there. Just get the bottom out. I can, if I can release two, I can lever it. They don't want to give themselves up easy, do they? I suppose the price is once this one's out, the other one's easy. This is the difficult one. Oh, thank God for that. Let's get this one out of here as well. Ooh, look at the state of that lot. I can whip this one out as well. There we go. Let's dry this all down and then we can get some silicon on it and glue it back in again. Make sure these are clean and dry. Okay, clean and dry. I'm going wipe around these. If any of this is wet before you seal it back in again, silicon and water just don't agree with each other and silicon will not stick to anything that's wet. So even if it's slightly damp, what you'll end up with is the silicon will just, well, separate from whatever you're trying to stick to it. So it's, it's critical that everything is dry for it to bond it back together again. I've seen some people have um, uh, done similar videos and they've said that the problems come back. Now, if this was slightly damp when they glued it back in again, that would be the reason because if, if they've used a good quality silicon and this is perfectly dry when they put it in, it's never ever gonna separate. So it must have just been that it wasn't completely dry. So what we'll do is we've dried it off with a towel. I'm gonna get the hot air blower on this as well and we'll warm it all up and make sure that everything is completely dry before we silicon it back in again. So we've got the hot air gun. Let's get it, uh, get it warmed up and dried out. If you've not got a hot air blower, you can always use a hair dryer. Just keep it on there and eventually it'll dry out. These hot air blowers are fantastic though. They really get things warmed up. You just gotta be careful you don't get too hot and take the paint off or we'll melt some plastic. But it really does uh, dry it out nicely. And this is such a poor design from Ford with these, uh, with these vents. The little silicon lip that's around them, it's not even gone hard or brittle or anything. So how the water's you know getting past it is just a poor design and the clips are weak. Right, so we've got some some silicon. This is like a multi-purpose uh, clear silicon. We'll um, we'll get that in the gun. Um, just got to cut the end off it, obviously. Fresh tube and all that. So we just get the knife in, slice the end off the tube without slicing through his hand. 
Take the little nipple off the top. Screw the top down on there and get it through again. And then we just need to make a little shape on the top of that. We don't want to go too far, but about there is going to be good. Just tap that off. We've got a nice little shape there to silicone around that. So we've got the we've got the vent here. I think what we're going to do is put a decent amount of silicone all the way around the inside of this this little rubber seal, and then obviously get the right wheel, and then plant it back in again, and it all ooze out and seal up nice and tight. Like I say, these are completely dry now. So let's get this. Um, Let's get this filled up with, uh, with gunk. I'll put a link in the description at the end to the Amazon shop where you can get silicon, silicon gun, tools, everything used to, uh, to sort this job out. Oops. <laughs> this is just showing how unsteady my hand is. It's all over the place, look. Wibbly wobbly. <laughs> Don't ever let him seal your bath up. Whatever you do, <laughs> it never looked the same again. <laughs> as long as we get plenty on there, it'll seal it up and do the job. I think that's what we're after here, is just uh, get plenty around it. Yeah, got plenty on there, and we'll lock that off at the end. And then we'll line that up and drop it back in. Now we've left out the soundproofing material, it was wet, it's not doing a great deal and it's just, yeah, does it need it? No. Let's just lob these back in again. You could dry these out if you were fussy and put them back in but I think we're better off without because they're a bit smelly, they've gone a bit stagnant and horrible. So let's drop that in there and we'll just ooze that back in, you can hear that clicking in. And then if we want to just go around the outside with that and just give it a once over just to really finish off around the top down the side just make sure everything's in nice and tidy but there you go one vent in sealed up nice let's do the other one same again just whiz it round get a decent amount on there okay same thing again Fire. Nice. That's that side done. Let's move over to the side. And to the side. So what these vents actually do, they regulate cabin pressure and they allow circulation and ventilation through the car, but only in a one-way direction. Beautiful. Look at it oozing out. Nothing better. If they weren't there, the bufferton inside the car would be unbearable. The one with the dodgy clip was just here, so we'll get plenty around that as well. Just stick it in. That looks pretty good though, that does. And let's shove that back in the hole. In. in she slips yeah well I drain that one and the last one Silicon everywhere, get it all over my hands. I'm carried away now. Look. Okay. They ain't going nowhere. They ain't going to come out again. 
All right, let's get that bumper back on. On again now. We've got to reconnect the um, rear parking sensor again. So let's start by getting this up somewhere in a reasonable place. We'll just clip that back in again. So we just plug in the uh, little connector back up again, and then the wire just goes back into the clip. That's the wires back in there. Now we can just bring that round, drop it in somewhere close. So it's them ones in. Yeah, that's it, isn't it? Push those in. Get that top one to clip in it there. In there. Yeah, so we've got the top one in there, and we're just going to slide that in onto these these clips. We should be able to just get that in, get that past that there, pull that round, and then clip that back in again, like so. And we're just going to put those two bumper bolts back in. We've got that one behind that. Two here, and the one at the bottom. that one done yeah, again we'll pull that just pull it back past that bumper bracket there and then clip this in like that make sure it's all nice we've got the one bolt in there Surprising how little holds these bumpers on. You wouldn't think uh, they'd stay on with just a few little screws holding it on. And last but not least, this got one down here on this side. There we go. And it's just those ones underneath and the uh, two in the back lights. That's one. And then this one here, same thing again. Get that up and through and push it up and in that's that done and then we've just got the two at the top on that side So let's start with this one that we gunked up last time. Then we we'll just make sure we keep the wire out of the way so we don't want it getting trapped in that again. Get that back in its little its little wire holder there. Make sure that's in and out of the way. Get them out of the way there. Make sure that we're we are not going to get that trapped again in that. And the beauty of that Boss White, you can take the light out, put it back in again, and it seals up. And it's done a really good job. It's it's not leaked anymore. So uh, definitely a good product for sealing up those those rear light seals. That's it. Same with this side. If I can figure out which way around the light is. <laughs> well, that was a tough one. There we go. And we just reconnect that wire back into that retainer in there. 
that's important so it doesn't get trapped in the uh, in the light seal and then just drop it back in again just remember to locate that little pin at the top there that just pushes through the rubber grommet then we can whiz up these little retaining screws again we've got to go hand tight we haven't got to go uh, reefing them up too much yep they're tight and then we just put the little covers back over on the inside and there's two polystyrene little retainer there to put the uh, load cover in wheels going in we'll get that done up polystyrene top on there and then we put that load cover back in shut down the boot make sure everything looks in line delightful so there we go we've uh, well we originally sealed the lights we've now had the bumper off and we've sealed those vents in the back so yeah everything's good the uh, bumper's back on again if that's been a use if you fancy giving it a bash at least you know where to look and where to go with it now um, give me a thumbs up like subscribe thanks for watching in the description I'll put links to tools and parts from the Amazon shop Thank you.